What I say a month ago, so excited for this. I, I'm almost in tears with the joy that brings me of how big this rebuild is going to be. That's right, the rebuild. It's time, it's so exciting. I, I ground up from my big toe all the way up, to, well, I'll just say all the way up to my brain, okay? Kind of just making sure I'm okay up here between the ears as well. That's important too. It's not just the physical, it's the mental. Gotta make changes. Yes, we do. Gotta up our game, everybody. Not getting any younger. That's what's in this box. That's uh, of course, I did not bring a knife, so let's we'll see if we can get this open. It's like an oxen, but a boxen. Oh my, my, that is, oh my. This is probably the most exciting thing I've purchased in the last, I don't know, 365 days. I'm just gonna call it as it is. Here's the situation. Why did I buy a box? What is this thing? Yeah, man, most of you have used a box like this in a gym and I'm learning as again, as I go through this rebuilding process after the injury, the sacrum, in case you're new, welcome by the way, I had a, sacr a stress fracture in my sacrum, which is a, a bone in your lower back. And it gave me a lot of time and opportunity to think about the future and think about how can I eh, come back stronger and faster. Well, some of it is connected to this box, all right? So oftentimes I go to the mountains and I run and I run and I run and it's a lot of running and it's a lot of vertical and I'm excited for the future. In particular, uh, running, racing in the mountains, I had big time. But what happens is I get tired. All of us get tired when we run in the mountains. And then I get to the gym. I do have a gym membership, love it. I'll still go to the gym. But what happens is I get so tired and the mountains are about eh, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half or two hours from my house, depending on which mountains I go to. By the time I get back to Denver and go to the gym, I'm done. My legs are saying, uh-uh, not today, Junior. You gotta go rest. Therefore, this box is gonna be used before the runs. And I get this question a lot from people. Seth, when should I go to the gym? Should I go to the gym you know, before my run, after my run, how many days a week? And I continue for, in college, we did twice a week. We did Tuesdays, Fridays, after usually a hard track workout. We would go to the gym, straight to the gym. Well, for me, as I get older, all right, not getting any younger, I'm learning that if I don't prioritize strength and plyometrics before I go run, graze for three, four, five hours up and down or Pikes Peak up and down or whatever, it just doesn't happen because my legs say, uh-uh, go to bed, all right? So this is gonna live with me. I won't have it in my car all the time, but you're gonna see this box a ton in the future. And you might be like, Seth, why didn't you just, why don't you just do it on a park bench or on a log or on a, you know, the, I actually don't even have a place on my car I could do it, like a tailgate or something like that. Um, you might ask, like, Seth, why don't you do that? Because sometimes, well, actually, no, not sometimes. Oftentimes, I'm in locations that don't, like, doesn't have that stuff readily uh, available, like a log or a rock, and especially something that's flat enough and strong enough for stair steppers, oh my goodness, this is cool. So we got 20 inches, 24 inches, and 30 inches. Wow, 20 inches is taller than I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay, here we go. So um, as you know, just getting back into it, I'm gonna show you a few things here. You can watch the titles on your screen, and oh my goodness, come on now. Gotta just, just think about what have you not done in the past that you might need to add in the future in order to stay healthy, get faster, and uh, yeah, that's me right here. I gotta really strategize and prioritize little th the little details 
of training, not just the big details of running up a mountain. Oh boy, okay, let's move this over here. Just gonna do stair steppers, nice and controlled. You slower movements, and my left leg, I can feel it, is uh, it's weak. It's definitely weak. That's the leg that was injured. That's the leg that was hanging on the crutches. Let's do it now. Come on now. Question of the day. Ooh. What have you had to change up in the last two years after an injury? What have you added? What have you taken away? Maybe it's buying something. Could be, oh my goodness, remember the slant board? Who's a slant board fan? I'm not saying you need to go buy a box. You can do most of this at your house. But at the same time for me, I just know how my body reacts to big mountain training. So I gotta be smart. Whew. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's enough right there. Oh, this is gonna, I can't even tell you. I'm like bubbling inside. The fact that I can just do this out in the middle of nowhere, I gotta get my coordination down with my arms. So this is my left leg. Oh, that feels really good to be doing this. It's this right now that leads to a starting line. You know that? It really is. And we'll give you so much confidence on that starting line. That's, remember I've said it before, like confidence on a starting line is, it's not everything, but it's most of the things. So eventually, We'll be doing the yeah, the big jumping, but we're, it's not time yet. That's probably what I'm most excited about, but also you can use this for laying on the ground, okay? So this is key for, you know, I don't want that PHT, the proximal hamstring tendinopathy to come back. It really is important to have a solid structure, some whatever you use. Again, like your couch probably isn't gonna work because it's too the cushion is too soft. You need to find like a hard chair or something so you get good you know, you get good push off power. Uh, that's what this box is offering. Let's go catch that sunrise. This, all right, I gotta stop. Let's just walk away. Woo, so good. <laughs> 